Right, All Saints Church, a shot. Fortunately, I just, I'm, I'm doing these narrow lanes, I only met one car, and that one back down. Oh God, it's difficult, it's up and down here. I'll be going back the way I come and get on a bigger road, I think. Well, this is a church that literally is right out in the middle of nowhere. There's old Berta parked safely in a little car park next to the church. Look at the views behind the church. It leads into the Quandock Hills. This is nestled near the Quandock Hills, by the way. I've never been here again in my life. There's lots and lots of gnats. I'll go and do the church just in case there's a christening at two. Let's just see what the time is now. Yes, it's about five to two. And I'll go and look at these graves in a minute. Not easy to get to, these ones, mind. Charlotte Tuck. She lived to 73, died in 1895. The Bailey family, Abraham Bailey. James Everard White. And there's a the little church that. With a pink cottage. Very old looking, isn't it? Look at how old that looks. I just come up here so that I can get a bit of a view as I come down the other right route. Pink thatch cottage, look. Hunter's Moon, it's called. Figure on there with horns. Creepy, isn't it? Thatch roof. Don't know who pronounced the name. It's uh, All Saints Aish Holt. Aish Holt. That old building there, I mean, there, that's really old. You can tell by the walls and the little windows, little leaded windows. Right, we'll do the video just in case there's going to be any sort of social event going on. Um, God, I hope I don't meet anything on the way back. It's, it's only enough for wide enough for one vehicle. That's old, that is, isn't it? That is old. 
type of red sandstone. Looks very simple. Pamela Mary Beach, she's buried up there. She's got a chair as well. Oh, the smell of the heather. And what there? Real old door. <sighs> oh, say. God, it smells, it smells old. This definitely smells old, doesn't it? That's why I said it's good to get the video done early. chest. An old picture of the church there. This is right out in the sticks, this is. Look at that old um that's how old that is. Watercolour I should imagine. Of the ferns and flowers. The map of the parish of Ashholt. Yeah, I got my glasses, by the way. Well, sometimes they provide them here. Look, they provide them. It's another old. You can't tell they're very nice because look how—that's heavy. That is little sparrows. No, I don't think they are sparrows. They've got. Very pointed beaks. Not sure what they are. <sighs> right then. The Church in the Green Romantic Chasm by the late Reverend Arthur Moss. The name Ashholt refers to the ash woods locally which provided cover for deer and other game. <coughs> Whether it is right to pronounce it ash or ash <coughs> is a perpetual matter of discussion. Even the spelling on Saxon documents is spelt Ishalt or Ashholt. Yeah, I'll have to read all that later. <coughs> In his diary, Coleridge speaks of Ashholt as that green romantic chasm, which is indeed a fair description. It must be seemed even greener after he had consumed with the Bryce's two bottles of port, some mead and a large meal. Yeah, well like I said, I'll study that in more detail later. And um, there's a look at now that that looks old. When it's solid and tubby like that, you can tell it's old. <sighs> Big wide wagon ceiling. I don't know how you describe the ceiling. Um, when it's um, a big broad one like that. It reminds me of a church over near Straight that's got a... Ashholt has got a big broad church, a big broad ceiling like that. But that is a magnificent, magnificent stained glass window above the altar there. My goodness, that is absolutely brilliantly. It's quite dark in here. <sighs> no, 
no carved benches ends, if you see, look, very plain. But I've got, so when I take pictures, I've actually got um, flash. feel very safe up here. Very creaky. Oh, a candelabra. Often see them in church. And there's the um, leper's squint hole, I think, or it could be the, what separated the commoners from the um, altar area. Like the squint hole or whatever they call it. It'll all be in the leaflet and I'll be able to um, put captions once again. <sighs> yeah, very, very um, Methodist looking, you know, sort of um, Masonic even. These wooden panels like this, no decoration, a little tiny piscina there in the corner. A little piscina. But that window is, well, that really brightens the church up, that, doesn't it? That's fantastic. <sighs> it's the only carving in here, the ends of these benches. Big bowl of um, geraniums there. I don't know if they are geraniums. I've got a feeling they are, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, yeah, so it's very, very basic in here. But even so, it's worth coming. So I'm doing the video first, in case somebody does come in. It's very difficult to video when there's other visitors. There's the other way through, look, the squint hole. It's a bit bigger than a squint hole, actually. Um, this is where the rest of the parishioners would have to watch. Not everyone was allowed near the altar, you see. Gethsemane, St. Mark chapter 14, verse 42 to 52, by Reg Gammon. Gethsemane, that must have been, oh, I don't know, I can't remember it all now. I can't remember everything. <sighs> Massive door. say anything about the font. Quickly let's have a look. Altar nave. The window by the pulpit is a square headed window of about 1340. A narrow and deep splayed opening. The middle window on the north side was once a doorway of a hide sometimes found in Norman churches. This church is situated high above the Canning Brook in an area of scattered population, typical of an early foundation before either Norman or Saxon. It was probably founded by a hermit priest who settled near the stream. The font dates from the 15th century. Development of the nave... And there must have been an earlier one. Old fonts often found in farmyards and private gardens have been brought back. Oh, I thought it would have been older than that. <sighs> very, very dark in here though, isn't it? I, I'm not going to put, I'm not going to try and find the lights. It's very, very musky. 
Right, over and out. Over and out for now. Just do one more zoom in on the window. You've got some like croissants in the picture as well. Don't know if that's in focus. We'll just check. It's difficult with your glasses on. Oh, it'd be awful if it was out of focus, wouldn't it? The glasses might have knocked a lot of that out of focus, you know, that I've just done. 